Today I want to show you how to fill a bowl with cereals with Thai flow. Alright, first let me show you the units. It's a 2 metric centimeter and one unit equals one millimeter. And let me bring up my models, a bowl and the cereals and just put them aside. Now let's first create a tie flow and open up the editor. Make it a little smaller and start with the birth. The birth operator will create 200 particles from frame 0 to 100. And uh, right now you can see one dot and it's not one, it's let's say go to the frame 100. Now it's 200 and all of them are in the center. So it looks like it's one. Let's press shift J to get rid of brackets. And we need some helper to tell Typhlo that generate particles on it. So I will go to the helper, go to the Typhlo, and create a tie icon. All right. And here in the operators, choose a position icon and pick the tie icon. You can see now when I go to the frame 100, let me go to the birth. We have 200 particles from frame 0 to 100. And let me place it somewhere around here. Now that we've created the particles, we need to give them movement. So I will go and choose a speed. Where is the speed? Speed operator. The blue operator and now you can see that my particles are moving and have speed the amount of speed you can change it by changing the magnitude for example if I change it to 1 they will have more speed so magnitude is related to speed now as you can see my particles are emitting randomly in the 3d space because the direction is set to random 3D, I need to change it along icon arrow. And if I scrub through my timeline, you can see nothing is happening. Why? Because the speed operator is separate from position icon. We use the position icon for our particles to be born on it, but the speed is something different. And again, we need to pick the icon to be able to give the direction. Now you can see we gave it the direction and the benefit of separating from the position icon one of them is you can change the direction and you don't have to rely on the position of the first tie icon you've made if i delete this one and choose the second tie icon you can see we can change it separately from the first one all right again i will choose my tie icon now we have the particles let me speed change the speed to like one i need to turn my particles into shape so i will go to this beige part and add a shape operator let's just decrease the magnitude 2.5 all right as you can see if i go to the mesh section you can see it's set to 2d triangles but it's not 2d it's still dot we need to go to the display and change the type from small dots to geometry now when i change the geometry from the mesh section to something like 3D torus midres. You can see my particles are now changed to toruses, but they're small. We need to enable the scale and scale them up so they will have proper 
size. All right, now we need our geometries act as a physical shape. So go to the purple section and add a physics shape. Now you can see my objects act as their physical objects. So what now? As you can see, my objects are so uniform and they all have the same direction. We need to add some variation by adding a rotation to them. So I will go to the blue section again and add a rotation. Now, when the particles are born, they have different rotations and this will give us some randomization in the direction of the toruses and I will also add a spin so the imperfection in the movement will increase. The difference between the rotation and spin let me disable the physics and also let's disable the spin disable the speed as you can see when particles are born they have different rotations this is when you add a rotation let's disable this and enable spin and now you can see my particles are spinning along the way and they do not stop so the difference between rotation and speed is this if i turn on the speed and decrease the magnitude it will be more visible you can see they are spinning okay let's enable the rotation increase the speed to 0.5 and then enable again the physics now i need to bring my ball in let's bring this up bring the ball here it has some kind of a animation i need to delete it delete the link okay for the geometry i need to choose my serial model that we've covered in the previous video if you didn't see it check it out the links are in description let's put it here and I will go to the shape and choose the reference node and pick my serial model all right as you remember we enabled the scale so let me change it to 100 or maybe 90% okay fine looks great and let's bring it a little closer for the middle of the bowl now I need to tell Typhlo that this bowl you have to interact with it so I will again go to the purple section and add a physics collision and pick the bowl. All right, you can see Typhlo detect the object, but it's acting weird. If I turn on the display hall, you can see Typhlo is seeing the object like this, a closed bowl. We need to change it to mesh. So now it's fixed. Let's scrub through timeline and increase the timeline a little. And turn off the display hall. All right, we're done. Let me change it to 300. If you want to increase the amount of bowls, you can go to the birth and change the total from 200 to something like maybe 400. Let the simulation 
complete and it's done all right in order to render it we need to add a mesh operator and then add a let's hit tab here and add material id if you don't know what is material id check out the previous tutorials that we've covered about how to assign different materials to the type flow i will put the link for you all right we added the material id and i changed it to static for now you can also create two or three materials like what i've done in the previous tutorial and assign different materials and colors for extra realism for now i just pick this material and give it to the type flow all right now we've done the simulation you can see there's some kind of a jittering in the models and they're moving and, and if you want to solve this problem you can go to the main settings grab the type flow go to the main settings and change the time step for example one fourth and this usually resolve the issue or maybe uh, let me change it to let's change it to one eighth all right now if I scrub through the timeline you can see we kind of decrease the amount of jittering a lot more but again still there is some unnecessary movement in the objects so what I usually do is I would bake the animation the benefit of it is let me do it I would go and choose export particles when I select the type flow, you can see I select all of the type flow particles and they are one object. If I change the export type to object and change the frame range from, let's say, here for example, 262 and export. Yes. Okay, now the difference is when I disable the birth, you can see we still have the objects and they are separate from the type flow. They are, they are all individual objects with the keyframe baked to a single object, as you can see. And after this frame there will no longer be any movement in the let's say simulation okay let's select all of these you can select similar or you can click go to edit and select instances okay delete them and go here and enable the birth Another way of solving this problem would be using the property test. I've just changed the time steps to frame for faster results. All right, let me first add a display data and you can see the data on the objects. I will disable the birth ID and enable the velocity magnitude. The velocity magnitude, or as you can tell, the speed of my objects have different values for example for this one in the air is 12 and the and for the bottom parts let's see for the bottom parts it's become less for example point, point 0.1 so i will use this number to tell typeflow if the velocity magnitude of an object goes for example below a certain amount of number convert that object into an static one so I will add a property test here in the last part. I will change the test type to velocity magnitude and change the value to, let's disable the simulation for now. Change the value to 005 and then add a new event and grab the physics switch and change it to kinematic and stop for stopping all of the if I don't use the stop 
let's enable it. If I disable the stop, you would see that my objects has the, for example, spin in it. So you need to add the stop to be able to stop the objects from any movement. All right. Now if I scrub through the timeline, And let's change this number to, uh, for example, 0.1 to see it even better. All right, you cannot see any difference, but if you notice, some of these particles doesn't have the display data on them. All right, the reason is because the new event should be displayed by the color that we set here. For example, I change it to maybe some orange but nothing is happening here. Why? Because we've applied the material to the type flow, so we need to remove the material to be able to see the color of the events on the objects. So I will go to the utility palette and then click on more and add a UVW remove. Okay, I will click on material and the material of this object here, the type flow will be removed. And now if I scrub through, you can see the first event has the blue color and the second event has this kind of orange color. Okay, now I want to decrease this number to something like 0 0.005 and then go to the frame steps and change it again to 1.8. All right, now you can see the objects that are not moving a lot will turn into kinematic object without any movement. Let's disable the display, turn this off and see. Hope you enjoyed this video. If this video was helpful to you, please like this video, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell button so you'll be notified as soon as I upload a new video and I will see you in the next one.